Lesson 9.3 is cubic models, power functions, and direct and inverse variation. So cubic functions are polynomials that have a degree or a highest power of 3. There's something of the form f of x equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, where a, b, c, and d are real numbers and a can't be 0. Your y-intercept, if you plug in 0, anything with an x in it goes away, so you're left with just whatever the constant on the end is. X-intercepts, you would set this thing equal to 0 and solve for x, whether it can factor um, or you just use your graphing calculator, and it can have either 1, 2, or 3 x-intercepts. Turning points are where a graph changes direction. So if you look at this like roller coaster, it would be you know at the bottom where it goes from decreasing to increasing, or at the top where it goes from increasing to decreasing. Uh, cubic functions can have either zero turning points, so they don't have any maximum or minimum turning point value, or two, they have one max and one min. Those are also called local max and local min. So here's our first example. We're going to use our graphing calculator to sketch these two functions. Um, on the sketch, we want to label our coordinates for where the graphs intercept both axis, x, and y axes, and then any maximum or minimum points, so any turning points. So go ahead and pause the video and use your graphing calculator to sketch both of these. So for the first one, I graphed y equals x minus 2 quantity cubed in my graphing calculator and then just looked at the graph and found any intercepts and any turning points. So in this case, there was no turning points. There was no place where it went from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. But there was a y-intercept at 0, negative 8, and there was an x-intercept at 2, comma 0. So this is a graph of y equals x minus 2 quantity cubed. For the next one, f of x equals x cubed minus 7x squared plus 4x minus 12. Again, I just plugged in my graphing calculator, and I found used the minimum and the maximum value uh, functions. I used the a zero function, and I used the value function to find all my piece of information. So the y-intercept is at 0, negative 12, which you can tell from the function as well. And then this maximum point, this turning point where it goes from increasing to decreasing, is at 0.306 common negative 11.4 and then it turns around again it goes from decreasing to increasing here at 4.36 comma negative 44.7 and then it crosses the x-axis it has an x-intercept at 6.67 comma 0 so again I just use my graphing calculator and the second trace calc functions to find all the information so in this example we have an open box being made out of a piece of card measuring 12 centimeters by 10 centimeters and then in the corners little squares of side x are cut out and then it's folded up to make an open box without a top on it. So part A says explain why the width of the box is 10 minus 2x centimeters and the length of the box is 12 minus 2x centimeters and then the height is x. And then part B says find the equation of the volume V of the open box in terms of x. So go ahead and pause the video and do parts A and B. So the width, the original width is 10 centimeters long, but then when you cut out a corner of 2x centimeters or x centimeters from both sides, you end up taking out 2x centimeters from these two little cutouts that you made. And same thing with the uh, length. The original length is 12 centimeters, and then you end up taking an x out here and an x out here when you cut out the corners. And the height is x centimeters because this little piece here that's left, you're going to fold that up. And so that ends up becoming the height of x centimeters. So then the volume would be length times width times height, where length is 12 times 2x, width is 10 times 2x, and the height is x. So then this is going to be your function that represents volume in terms of x. Using your function, find the volume of the box if x is 3 centimeters. So if you cut out the corners to be 3 centimeters, use your graphing calculator to graph or sketch a graph of v against x in a suitable domain, and then also find the x-intercept. So go ahead and pause the video and do parts c through e. So if you plug in 3 for x, you end up with 72 cubic centimeters. So that's the volume of the box if the corner that you cut out was 3 centimeters by 3 centimeters. And then here is the sketch of my graph here. It has x-intercepts at x equals 0, 5, and 6. And then and I also put in the local maximum and the local minimum. So this is the graph. So then part F through H are asking questions about the graph in context. So go ahead and pause the video and answer those questions. So part F asks, what are the upper and lower limits for the size of x in this problem and why? So the lowest x could be could be 0. That would just be like if, like little above 0 because if it was 0, you wouldn't be cutting anything out. You wouldn't be able to actually fold it up to make a box. 
And then if it was bigger than 5, you would, for the side that's 10, if x was 5, you would just be cutting the paper in half, and you wouldn't actually be able to fold it into a box. So anything between 0 and 5 is where you could actually have space left over and fold it up into a three-dimensional shape. The local maximum is up here at 1.81, 96.8, and the local minimum is down here at 5.52, negative 5.51. And which one is not possible? Obviously, we can't have negative volume, so the local minimum is not possible. And this x value, so if I were to cut out an x value of 1.81, that would maximize the volume of the box. That would give me the biggest possible volume based on the restrictions of the length and the width. In this example, Petra is throwing a shot put, and the path of the shot put is parabolic, so it's not cubic like we've been talking about, it's actually quadratic. f of t is equal to 1.75 plus 0.75t minus 0.0625t squared, where t is time in seconds, and f of t is the height. And we want to find the height of the shot put after 5 seconds, and use our graphing calculator to find the time where the height is 3 meters above the ground, or the times multiple times. So go ahead and pause the video and try this one. This one's pretty straightforward. So part A says find the height after 5 seconds. So just plug in 5 for T and you end up with 3.9375 meters above the ground. And then part B, use your graphing calculator to find the times where the height of the shot put is 3 meters above the ground. Um, so I set the function equal to 3. I used, I graphed both of them, Y1 as the left side and Y2 as 3. And I found where they intersected. And they intersect at 2 seconds and 10 seconds. We're going to look at the inverses of cubic functions. So we looked at inverses back in chapter 5. We introduced them. A function had to be 1 to 1 for ha to have an inverse that was a function. And earlier in this chapter, we said that quadratic functions do not have inverses because they're not 1 to 1. So here we have two, inverse, uh, two cubic functions, f of x equals 2x cubed plus 1, and g of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared minus x plus 4. So looking at both of these, I want you to answer, are they both 1 to 1 functions? Or if so, if only one of them is, which one? And then do either of them have an inverse function? So go ahead and pause the video and answer questions 1 and 2. So f of x is 1 to 1. If I were to draw a horizontal line anywhere on this graph, it looks like it flattens out right here, but it actually doesn't. It just gets infinitely close to it. Um, then it would pass what we call the horizontal line test, or every y value has its own x value. So f of x is 1 to 1, but g of x is not. It fails the horizontal line test. Um, there's a lot of different places that have a y coordinate that has multiple x coordinates. So building off of that, f of x would have an inverse function, but g of x would not. So unlike linear functions, where every single linear function except for vertical and horizontal lines have inverse functions, and unlike parabolas, quadratic functions, where none of them have inverse functions, uh, cubic functions, it depends on the shape of the graph. It depends on where the maxes and mins are or if there are turning points or not. So here we have two functions. I'm telling you that they are one-to-one, -one, so therefore they will have inverse functions. So f of x equals x cubed minus 2, and f of x equals 4 x plus 1 quantity cubed plus 5. And we want to find the inverses of both of these functions. And we want to use your graphing calculator just to graph each function and the inverse it found and check to see that they are symmetric across the line y equals x. So go ahead and pause the video and do number four. So there's two ways you can find your inverses. You can switch x and y and then solve for y, or you can do it step by step logically. So if you switch x and y, you get x equals y cubed minus 2. Uh, add 2 to both sides, take the cube root. The inverse function is f inverse of x is equal to cube root of x plus 2. Or work backwards, you start with x, you cube it, you subtract 2, and you end up with f of x. So on your inverse, you're going to start with x, add 2, cube root, and end up with f inverse of x. So here's the graph of f of x in red, and here's the graph of f inverse of x. And then this dotted line is y equals x. So you can see that they are, in fact, uh, reflexive across the line y equals x. For b, same thing, I did it by switching x and y, so you get x equals 4, y plus 1, quantity cubed plus 5, so subtract 5 from both sides, uh, divide both sides by 4, take the cube root of both sides, subtract 1, so you end up with f inverse of x to be the cube root of x minus 5 over 4, minus 1. Or, again, if you work through it logically, you start with x, you add 1, you cube, you multiply by 4, you add 5, and you end up with f of x. So working backwards, you start with x, you subtract 5, you divide by 4, you cube root, you subtract 1, and you end up with the inverse of f. 
And here's the function or the graph. So f of x again is here in red, f inverse is here in blue, and you can see that they are in fact reflexive across the line y equals x. The last part is direct and inverse variation. So we talked about direct variation a little bit back in chapter 5 when we were talking about linear functions that don't have a y-intercept or have a y-intercept of 0. Um, and there were ones like when you're converting between pounds and kilograms that you just multiply by a number. It, you just have your slope, but your y-intercept is 0. So we can take that a step further. Uh, variation is noted with this little kind of like half infinity-ish symbol. And what that means is it equals k times x, or x is being multiplied by whatever variable that follows. So direct variation, we talked about direct variation with linear functions, but that can be actually anything, um, any power function. So this, if you have y is directly varies by x to the n, it means that y is equal to k times x to the n. Or inverse variation would be the same thing, but your power function would be 1 over x to the n. So if you say y is inversely varied 1 over x to the n, then that would be y equals k divided by x to the n. So there's nothing else being added or subtracted. It's just k times whatever your power function is. So in this example number 5, it says the distance d meters that a rock falls varies directly. So we're going to have k times x to some power with the square of time, t. So if the rock falls 6 meters in 2 seconds, write the equation for d in terms of t. So what this means when it says varies directly with the square, the square would be t squared. So t varies directly with t squared, or t is equal to some constant k times t squared. So given what they give you here, you can use that to write the equation. So go ahead and pause the video and try part a. So they gave us that it fell 6 meters in 2 seconds, so I plugged in 2 for t and 6 for d, and I solved for k, so you got 6 is equal to k times 2 squared, or 4k, so k is equal to 3 over 2. So our equation that represents this rock falling is d equals 3 over 2 t squared. So then using that equation, find the distance the rock has fallen after 5 seconds. So if you plug in 5 for t, you end up with 3 halves times 5 squared, or 37.5 meters. So when something is varying directly, you're going to have whatever your dependent variable equal to k times some power of your independent variable. Versus this one, it says the number of hours in taken to build a wall varies inversely with the number of people x who are able to work on it. So this means that using the notation, n varies inversely to x. So n is equal to some constant k divided by x. The more people who work on it, the faster it's going to go, so less time. So when three people are available, the wall takes two hours to build. Using that information, find the time it takes to build the wall when four people are available to work on it. And then also, given that it takes three hours to build the wall, figure out how many people worked on it. So go ahead and pause the video and try this. So for the first one, part A, I used the fact that it took three people two hours to build the wall to write my equation. So I plugged in two for n and three for x and found k to be six, multiply both sides by three. So our function is n equals six over x. And then for the next part, it says find the time it takes for four people to work on it. So I plugged in x to be four and you get three over two or one and a half hours. So it would take one and a half hours for four people to build the wall. For part B, it says given that it takes three hours to build the wall, how many people worked on it? So using the same function that I found in part A, I plugged in 3 for n, and I solved for x. So cross multiply, you get x to be 6 divided by 3, or two people worked on the wall. So this has been cubic functions, power functions, and inverse and direct variation.